Okay, gang, let's talk real quick about why I am not a fan of body composition assessment, mainly via the in-body scan machine or bioelectrical impedance. Let's talk a little bit about this. What is body composition? It's what you're made of. The amount of you that's muscle and the amount of you that's fat, basically. Those are the two uh, that we're mostly interested in. So how do they measure that? Well, they send an electrical current through your body, right? If you're holding the device that you hold in your hands, it's basically gonna send an electrical current through one arm and around to the other hand, okay? So the in-body solved that problem because you stand on it, uh, hopefully I think with bare feet, and that sends a current through the lower body, and then you also grab it, and so that sends a current through the upper. So you're getting a little bit better uh, reading there, uh, so the story goes. The problem is that technology has been studied and looked at extensively, and it simply has too big of a margin of error to be reliable. Um, it can make you think that you are not making progress when you are, or it can make you think that you are making a ton of progress when you're not because of the margin of error. Now, some people say, well, you know, at least it gives you a, a, a an accurate trend. But the fact is, no, it doesn't. Um, don't take my word for this. James Krieger has written an amazing set of articles about this that are incredibly thorough, and they delve into much more detail about the pitfalls uh, and the limitations of body composition assessment. But basically, uh, I've sold these items in a fitness store, and I've let people use them time and time again. Now, time and time again, the main culprit here, or I would say the main victim is females. Females would come in, not have an accurate idea of what their body composition should even be. Um, okay, so, so they, they would uh, hear like, okay, uh, you know, a woman would come in, I'd test her on the thing, it would say she had, you know, 25% body fat, and you could just see her morale just get crushed. And she would just be, overwhelmingly just alarmed and and you know introspective and just worried and it would just be messing with her head to the point that when a woman would come in to the store I would almost like refuse to do it okay because it's so misleading uh, that it's not worth doing it just sets people off on the wrong track and they go to extremes to try to, to get their body fat down first of all women should have a much higher body fat and that's perfectly okay and healthy um, Secondly, the machine we're accurate measuring this with is not accurate, and it could have a wide margin of error depending on your hydration, among other things. Um, so I really caution you to be careful using this because it can really mislead you and send you off on the wrong track and make you either go to extremes in terms of your workout or maybe sit back and not work out hard enough because you think you're doing well when you're not, or you think you're doing uh, not so good when you are. So uh, what do you do as an alternative? Okay, what do you do? Well, you take body measurements for one. You can measure your waistline, measure your chest, arms, thighs, okay? Uh, if, if those measurements change, something's happening there, and that's objective data. Um, it's best if you have a trainer do that for you because they're gonna do it accurately and objectively. Uh, in, in the proper location, etc. Okay, short of doing that, you could simply just look in the mirror, okay? Because that also is objective, and you can also look at the way your clothes fit you, right? Take progress pictures in the same location with the same lighting at the same time of day, etc. Those are going to be more of an accurate uh, depiction of your trend of which way you're going, okay? Another good way is simply just use the scale. Okay, weigh yourself, uh, uh, preferably every single day. Take an average of what your weigh is, weight is each week. And if the trend is going down, you're losing weight. If at the same time you are also diligently lifting weights, okay, you're going to be keeping your muscle and losing body fat, okay? So I think uh, those alternatives are, are much healthier for you to go with as opposed to uh, having something that just absolutely can can wreck your head, okay? So um, be careful of body composition assessment. What else? Uh, another way that you can know uh, what's going on in terms of your muscle loss or gain is what is your strength level doing, okay? If you're doing certain lifts, 
and you repeat them on a regular basis and your strength is either staying the same or going up, then you can be pretty sure that your muscle is intact or that you are growing new muscle, in fact, okay? So this is kind of like a collection of my thoughts on this issue. Um, I'm sure there's some, a lot of things I left out. If you have questions, hit me with those questions. I'll do the best I can to either answer them myself or defer you to someone who can. So I hope this helps a lot, you guys. Um, again, if you, if you liked the video and it helped you, you know, hit the like button. If you wanna see a lot more content like this, subscribe to it, share it. That helps me a lot. So thanks for listening and I'll catch you on the next time.